how to add a shadow, an interesting shadow, to a layer. Now, this could be a layer that's like a type layer, but in this case, it's just a basic rectangle. But it could be an image, it could be anything. You can see it over here in the layer panel. So we've got window and layer. So with that, what you can do, you can duplicate that design. Now, I can go, before I do that, I want to create a folder structure for it, because I want to basically put them together. Because when you move things around, you don't want it sort of separated. Well, you could, of course, no big deal for that but it makes it easier just to organize them. So go to layer and new layer folder. And now with that, I'm just gonna quickly drag that in. So you can drag them in, you can move, and also you can drag it out if you want. What you can then do, you can go to layer and you can duplicate that one. So just duplicate that. Now this is gonna be my shadow. Now I could make multiple shadows. I could make three or four shadows. So I could duplicate that layer again and again and again. But now I'm going to fill this with something. But before I do that, I want to distort it. So I've got that selected. You can see there in the layer. What I can do, go to Edit and Transform. And I'm going to go with Distort. Move some of these panels out of the way. This is one thing. Sometimes the panels get over. And I'm just going to move this top one here. And I'm going to move this one as well. Just move it out like that. And I'm going to move it down slightly. And I'm going to move it down slightly there again. But the key thing is keep it this one and this one at the edge. So that's the best thing for this shadow. You don't have to have that, of course. And you can also, of course, stretch this out further if you want. You maybe make it go thinner over that way. It's up to you, depending obviously how you want to. You can change that. Just tweak it when you feel right when you look at it. So you've got that design there. I'm going to actually have it slightly further down than that. So you've got that, then click OK. Now what you can do with that layer, you can go to select and use one of these options here, select color gap. But what I'm going to do, it's going to go over here. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Just go to right click and go down to selection from layer, create selection. So I've got that selection. Then what I can do, I can fill it with a grating. I could fill it with black, green, blue, whatever. I could fill whole heaps of it, maybe tone, etc. Perfectly reasonable as well. But I'm not, I'm going to go with gradient. So select the gradient tool. And now gradient, because there's so many different gradient and tool panels here, window, tool, subtool, tool property. I certainly got that accessible as well as window and subtool detail. Now I'm going to use this black to white. Now that was available in the, the various, so I've got so many panels here. You can see here the subtool gradient, and there's there it is. Now it might be a different position for you, I don't know, but uh, black to white. And you've got this tool property, you've got all the various options here. Draw on editing layer. No point if it just draws it. You've got this other option, create gradient layer. Don't want that. So I want it on to actually on that layer. That's the key thing. Then move that away a bit. Here's the subtool detail. I said so many panels. Sometimes it can overload with panels. Make certain you've got linear and then go for it. Do not repeat. And now with that black to white, what you can do, you can just go over here and just apply it. Now you can apply it slightly below. Don't have to apply it exactly at the bottom. And then just drag it out to about there. And you can see you can vary it. You don't have to do it like that. You can maybe have it like that. So you can just have it darker there or maybe further up, and you can see the effect you get. I'm going to go with that, that one there. So you've got a nice little option there for that. So select and deselect, and you can think, well, that's okay, it's, it's quite nice. But what you can also do, of course, you can blur that. It's a layer, it's a standard layer. What you can do is you can go to filter, and you've got blur, maybe Gaussian blur. Set the strength, and you can go there, click OK, and you can see you've got this nice blurring effect that goes out there. And obviously, depending on the angle you want. And of course, what you can always do, you don't have to go with this approach here. What I can do is go back. Now, this is the one trouble. It's not like there's no smart objects or anything, so you can't. So, so I'm just going to go back to the initial state. Maybe it's actually a good idea, actually, if you 
want to do it that way is just to duplicate it again over here and then maybe hide it. So you've got a layer you can always go back to. It's, it doesn't matter. Obviously, you can just duplicate the top one anyway. But it's just a simple way of doing it. It's just to create a couple of copies, which you can then just sort of go like that so you don't see it. So you've got that one and say you want to change it again. What you can do again, you can go to the transform. So edit and transform. And you can go for distort again, maybe free transform. And again, just go like that. And just vary it. Maybe go for that one. Or maybe have it going further up there. And you can do apply obviously a whole number of different transforms. You don't have to, of course, transform it at all. You could just apply it as solid, exactly the same as before, the actual shape of the layer. So click OK. Now you've got this design here. What you can then do, of course, exactly the same thing. Go over here, right click there, selection from layer, create selection, and then, of course, fill it again with that gradient. So again, go down to the gradient tool, using the same gradient here. And again, you've got other options, you've got other gradients. You don't have to go with, you maybe go for one of the blue ones, maybe create an orange if you want to make the color. So maybe change the black into orange. Just go down here, change that, perfectly reasonable as well. Apply the gradient there. So you can just see it going off that direction this time. So again, what you can do, deselect. So select menu and deselect. And you've got that gradient, perfectly reasonable. And now because you've got it in the folder, what you can do, just go there, back to the move tool. You can move it around. Ah, because that was a typical, slightly off the edge. It didn't go all the way up. So because of that, quick solution, simply go back to that gradient. And then again, of course, right click, go down selection from layer, create selection. There, so it does help avoid going off the edge. And I won't say yes, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't. So uh, that's uh, one of those things. So you've got that selection. Again, what you can do, you can simply go to the gradient tool and use exactly the same gradients before. Or I say vary it and just add that. And then once you've done that, select, deselect, and then of course, like I say you can actually vary. It. It's actually quite a, quite a sharp. You might not want that. So what you might want to do again is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur it. Click OK, so you get a more uh, interesting blur that way. So then once you've done that, of course, what you can do, you can then go back to the move tool and you can just move it around. And you see, obviously, depending on the light direction, you might not want that. And of course, you don't have to have it like this. You don't have to distort it. You could also just scale it so it's sort of feels behind, makes it much bigger. So it's looking like sort of in the distance and it's going onto that surface and the background. So there's a whole variety of different designs you can create. And of course you could maybe tweak the shape of the, sh of the shadow. Doesn't have to be exactly that. Obviously you can maybe apply brush strokes and just sort of smudge it, blur it a bit to create a more unusual shadow if that's what you want to do. And of course, you can apply effects to that shadow. So you can go to that shadow and then tweak it more. But like I say, just add some like spray or something, grain, give it a bit of graininess. Perfectly reasonable as well. Just go there. And of course, I'm not just, this is going to be very quick. So droplets, and you can just add some droplets there. Obviously, not that one, not much use. Uh, maybe go for black or maybe gray, and then just apply a bit of gray, grain there. But of course, because it's going over the edge, I don't want that. What I want to do is again, go to here, right click, and then selection, create selection. And again, you've got that. And then you can just add some grain. And of course, what you can also do is change the opacity. So obviously that's not particularly great in terms of, so you can modify, just go through all the various settings here and just try and create a really interesting, sort of maybe go for the ink, go for the, let's say opacity. Let's just reduce the opacity down. Something a bit lower than that. So you can see, you can create a far more interesting sort of shadow than the basic, and maybe make it a bit darker down there. Maybe change it past you a bit. Change it past you a bit again. And you can see you can create a bit more of a graininess there. 
and then you can see it spreading out by. Select and deselect, and you've got your uh, slightly more interesting shadow effect than the normal standard shadow effect. And like I say that can be used exactly the same with other like text, perfectly reasonable, with circles, images, etc., or maybe slightly more unusual shapes, so star shapes or polygon shapes or whatever. It really doesn't matter because you can apply exactly the same thing. You've got that same layer, that shadow layer, which you can then apply these various effects, gradients, etc., to those. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. I'm always adding new tutorials about Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, Illustrator, and many, many others. Also, if you've got some comments, questions, what have I done wrong, what have I done right, what things have, should I explain maybe better? Perfectly happy to obviously redo this video so you can see, you know, because sometimes I do things and I think, oh, that's really obvious, or and I've done it too quickly. Please put it in the comments and I will try and correct that. Also, dislike or like. Thank you much.